Hey everyone, so you may know the Rhino from a few of my previous videos. I've made a couple of versions of it already. This is just the basic one, I've gone ahead and cloned it, because today we're going to be modifying it for a specific purpose, but just in case you didn't know it already, 7600 kilos, 630 horsepower, yeah, and it's an armored van of some kind. So the Rhino has a few unique quirks, being a modded vehicle, uh, it will allow you to do things that you normally cannot do on other automation bodies, and one of those things is increase the offset of the wheels significantly, and by significantly I mean like way out the sides. Now normally, to get this kind of offset, you would have to have a fender that overlaps there, but for the Rhino, you don't. So I've gone ahead and done that to the front and the back, so already our track width is significant, and we're going to have to move a few things here, so I'm going to move the exhaust to the back and I'm going to preemptively move this light because the next thing that's gonna happen is uh, a little unique to the Rhino. It has another feature that I did not use before but I have mentioned and that is the wheels can become massive. Okay they are growing right now I'm just clicking away but you can see they're getting past the actual fenders. We're up to 1500 wheel size and it's still going uh, I believe it stops at 1800, so our fun kind of gets capped, but once we get there, there we go. <laughs> That's the full size of the Rhino wheels, and I have tested this in-game. It does work. So we're going to build something based on the Mega Rhino. The Rhino with the biggest wheels that it can have, and hopefully it actually drives properly. We shall see. So a very fitting name for this would be the Rhino Big. That's what it's going to be called. Uh, so first things first, we have a tired old uh, 1975 V12. It's actually not that bad an engine, but I'm going to keep it for this. Um, but what we're going to do instead is maybe, uh, you know what, I don't want it to be too slow. We need just a little bit of extra power out of it. Let's try and get maybe 650. So I'm going to raise the quality sliders just a little bit. It's been a while since I've tuned this engine or anything. Um, it does, okay, even with just a slight quality slider raise, it does cap out at 650 but it would be good to uh, to fix some of his issues, perhaps. Currently, it's naturally aspirated. I'm going to leave it that way. We don't need anything uh, too nuts here. We're already doing something that is unrealistic. Um, so I'm going to go super leaded, uh, and we'll mess with the fuel mixtures and such. All right, it's 678. We don't care about fuel economy at all, so let's raise this. Actually, let's not raise that, because we're just losing power. Uh, we'll raise up the ignition timing a little bit, and maybe... Oh no, we're good on exhaust. Let's go race exhaust. Oh, okay, there we go. There was our restriction. And like 700 horsepower is not bad. Um, we need power low end though, so I feel like I might need to lower the cam profile. So we lost a bit of power, but we did gain a lot of mid-range power. Our peak power is down, but that's fine. Um, this needs more torque than anything. So I'm going to lower that up just to make these things a little bit better. And that's going to be it. All right, so we have a power plant for this thing. Maybe it's time to put some off-road fixtures on there. I moved the exhaust because I actually made this previously, and these will cut off the exhaust, and then the exhaust fixtures just don't, just don't exist anymore, so we'll have to redo that. I'd like to fix this, so we might uh, redo some of the other features there as well. And I think that there are quite a few mods that I have downloaded uh, that will apply to this as well. But first things first, we need some paint. Uh, the Rhino has always been just a steel color because it's an armored truck. Uh, let's update the color of it to the more modern looking steel. Oh, that is perfect. Flat black. So the entire Rhino has been blacked out except for uh, these chrome fixtures here. Uh, I don't know why. In the original build of this, I didn't change these, which was dumb. But anyway, um, we'll just actually let's just get rid of that and duplicate these. That just makes it easier. And now they are the exact same. Magic. Alright, so one thing I wanted to do, because these clip into the body very obviously, I wanted to do a cutout uh, to show that they're, well, oh yikes, I forgot how many mods we have. All right, yeah, there are a few bull bars and things here that we're definitely going to try, but I also have um, some cutouts for uh, fenders, and they don't seem to work too well on this application. I don't exactly know why, but I'll show you what I mean. Alright, so these are them, uh, but basically you can see, like, if I put it up against the body, it'll cut out a section, which is really cool, and you can use that for a lot of 
uh, different applications, but unfortunately, uh, it will not go any lower on the Rhino here, so it just kind of, it just doesn't look right. I don't know. Uh, I guess I could try maybe putting one on the side. Maybe we can give that a shot. Okay, so an angled version does somewhat work. Okay, we might be able to do something with this. Uh, it might be a little bit rough looking, but it'll be cut out at the very least. Okay, all right, we're getting somewhere. Uh, if we just make this body colored, then it should theoretically blend in. Oh goodness, okay, this looks a little rough, uh, to be honest. I don't know if I'm going to keep it or not, but for now I'll leave it. Um, I think one thing, I don't want them to come to a point because that's just kind of weird, uh, but perhaps, I don't know, it cuts it out if, if nothing else, it does cut it out. Uh, we'll come back to that and see see if I can get it to look proper. Alright, so up front we have a license plate, we can get rid of that. This is not going to be for on-road use. Uh, I'm going to drop the bumper itself down a bit farther because I want to put a winch on there. We're not going to be sacrificing any roll or um, like approach angle here, but I do have uh, in the tow hook section there is a winch, so let's put it on. <laughs> it just makes sense for this vehicle. However, I think that the Rhino seeing as it currently weighs a ridiculous amount, could probably use two or three of these. All right, the back end, we do have a trailer hitch. I'm going to get rid of that for now. Exhaust, same thing. We're going to do something different with the exhaust. Probably go for a snorkel and then, uh, I don't know, maybe exhaust up, the, up and out the back or something. I don't know. Uh, but first things first, we need a rear bumper on here of some kind. I do have quite a few options including some uh, off-road spec bumpers. This doesn't exactly match with the 1970s look, but it doesn't really need to. I think it works just fine. Maybe just that. We could also go for a very enlarged regular truck style back bumper. Um, it doesn't look terrible, to be honest. It's it's not the worst thing I've seen on this uh, on this body, but I don't know. It just doesn't fit with the overall boxy shape of it, does it? Hmm, gotta make some design choices here. Like, if I really want it to fit on there, it has to be absolutely massive. So I think I'm gonna get rid of that and keep exploring on this and see what there is. Alright, I think I've got it. I'm gonna go for this one here. It's just a nice flat look. And we can probably put a hitch on there too, because, well, what is what is this thing without a hitch? It just needs it. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. In order to fix that bumper cutting issue, I had to put the lights up here. Uh, but I think that's going to be fine. They don't look too bad up there, actually, which is a good thing. Um, but one thing we are missing that I, I put a little bit of extra detail on uh, one of the previous ones that I did, the van. Uh, it was not that long ago, but basically all I did was take these and um, just have like a, a triple light at the top, which is very uh, sort of like large vehicle-esque. They all seem to have it, so why not put it on these as well? I think it's just like that extra little feature that, that you need to, to bring it all together. Unfortunately, the Rhino does have a few uh, body issues, like it has um, some odd cutting here and there, depending on what fixtures you use, but for now, it's not bad. That's going to work out just perfectly. And of course, we need some massive off-road lights. Can't be an off-roader without them. I do have a few options. I just got to find them. I don't know where they went, but... I've got a lot of, like, <laughs> a lot of mods, uh, if you've been watching the videos. There we go. So we have a few options in terms of off-road lights. Uh, so we can stick uh, these sort of ones down here, maybe um, a little bit larger sized. Just kind of makes sense for this, c considering how massive it is. And then we can take, I guess, these and put them on top. Haven't used these for a while. Okay, it does kind of look like it has rabbit ears on it, but that is not intentional. Uh, I do have a few other things that I want to put on there, including a back rack. I believe I have one somewhere. Okay, this is sort of meant to go in the, the back of a, a truck or something, but that's not really what I'm going for. There's another piece here somewhere. All right, I found it. There it is. This is the one. Okay, let's get rid of these because we're going to use this fixture instead. Uh, but this does have quite a few variations uh, that we can use to uh, put a little bit of a top rack on here and then we can also use some of its um, bumper features as well but this is just a really nice mod um, it's just perfect for this build so we're gonna make a huge version of it and then put it on that is massive but 
it just fits so well. All right, and it's gonna be a shiny metal as well. <laughs> the lights on it are just huge, but it, it's perfect. This is exactly what we needed on there. <laughs> the off-road version of the Rhino is coming together almost flawlessly. Still have to fix these, and I think we should probably add a couple of extra things from here uh, just for those extra touches. Now it does have um, like holders um, that you can use to, I guess, put fuel in or whatever you might be carrying. Uh, unfortunately, they, they do stick right to the door on the Rhino, which isn't great. Oh, we can have a side box? That's cool. I'm definitely going to put one of those on here. Okay, this definitely seems like something that would be more for a truck, so I won't do that. All right, I, I am going to put one of these on. Uh, I just like the, the little detail of it too much, and I think I'm going to mirror it as well. So we'll have two of those on the back just to add to the look a little bit. And we could probably put a winch on the back too, like why not? We kind of need it. So that's a rear winch on the back. Okay, we need to fix this uh, fender issue first, and then that might be it. I might change the uh, wheels to be something different, but other than that, off-road spec Rhino is like almost ready to take on the jungle here. A pretty quick build overall. All right, so there are the fenders there uh, from what I've done with them with the cut. I'm not sure about this. I don't know if I'm gonna stick with it or not. I tried to match them up with another one that goes on top and it sort of works. If, if I was able to just have flat pieces, it might be a little bit easier, but these kind of curved edges here don't make it easy. Hmm, maybe looking from a distance, it does look a little bit more realistic, um, but there must be a better way to do this. I might have to think for a second. So hold on, let me think if I can do this a better way, and then I'll be back. All right, I've decided to keep the back, but I'm not going to do the front. I did try the front, uh, but I think that it looks okay as is, and that it just doesn't work with this um, like smaller section here. I can't get it to go right. So it, we're going to keep the feature on the back. It's a little bit different, but uh, we'll see what it looks like in beam. Hopefully it turns out okay and doesn't just become a bunch of lines. One final touch is I'm just going to duplicate a bunch of these. Put them all on the front here, and uh, hopefully uh, that kind of looks a little bit more like big beast type of truck thing. And yeah, it mirrors the back and it works out perfect. Let's move on. So the game is giving us a few warnings. It says it has strong understeer, and it has significant issues with wheel spin. Um, I'm surprised, actually, that it's not complaining about the wheels being too big. Uh, I had, like I said, I previously had tested this and it did complain just a little bit. It said that the wheels were not thick enough, basically, which doesn't make sense because they are massive. So thankfully it's not giving that same issue. Okay, on to the drivetrain. So we need four wheel drive for sure. Uh, manual, I guess. We'll put it up to five speeds. Uh, more speeds, the better in this case. We have not got much top speed out of the engine upgrades, uh, and we're still having wheel spin issues. Let's take a look at the graph. 79% wheel spin issue, and we're still going 0 to 139 seconds. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's go automatic locker. We're going to need to be able to lock the diffs on this. Uh, that has helped with the wheel spin a touch, but I'm going to lower down the spacing. It's really not going to be quick at all. In fact, it is going to be incredibly slow. Um, in each gear, we have 100% wheel spin chance in first gear. Honestly, I don't know if this is even accurate, considering the wheels are just ridiculous. Um, but one thing I'm going to do for this build is I'm going to increase the quality of these components, uh, just because we definitely need at least some help to stay alive here, especially with this. Oh, I accidentally broke it. I think I might have broken the wheels because now we don't have a graph anymore. Uh-oh, I'm gonna have to retry here. Okay, got the graph back. Hopefully things are going to work. <laughs> That's crossing my fingers there. 64% uh, wheel spin. We're going a little bit faster to zero to 100. I'm uh, probably gonna lower this down even more. It is not meant for top speed at all. Actually, let's lower this just because top speed is, is not really that big of an issue. We, we really want more power down low. So we're gonna have low spacing and hopefully that'll help it. I am going to try chunky off-road tires. That might be a mistake. We'll see. Um, now, one thing that is debatable, the vehicle still weighs even more than it used to, 7,700 kilos. Um, we should probably do a little bit of weight reduction, like just a little bit. Uh, we'll go alloy rims instead of steel. Probably not realistic again, but 
uh, for now we'll leave it. We're going to need the best brakes money can buy, like the absolute best. Uh, they're already high quality, but we need even better than that. And uh, we'll increase this brake airflow 100% as well. It needs it. Um, and we'll put that up too. It seems like we don't even need downforce because this thing weighs more than the earth does. Okay, we're going to take out the seats. Uh, we're not going to have any of these middle seats. We're just going to leave the two here and we'll have basic stuff. Lower weight with higher quality, so we're, we'll raise that up. Uh, that can stay the same. Actually, you know what? Safety, uh, we'll lower that down. And we'll lower this down too. We just want to make it weigh just a little bit less. I'm going to go standard. I'm going to go gas monotube and an off-road preset. So it raises the height. We'll increase the suspension quality as well. And this thing is even more of a monster than it used to be. Honestly, I think we could probably fit a full Bugo underneath here, but we're going to test that soon. Okay, so we have lost a thousand kilos, so it is much, much lighter, which is good. Uh, that, that'll help it a lot. Um, it's not having as bad of issues as it previously did. Its top speed has gone up, but if we take a look at the wheel spin, okay, it, it is down. And the thing is a lot faster, so seems like losing all that weight was a pretty good idea. But I think that's going to be it for the Rhino Big. Uh, the off-road edition of the Rhino is ready to take on some obstacles in beam, but I don't think anything is going to be able to stop it, especially not with that much ground clearance. We'll have to see. So I bet you can already tell I'm going to have way too much fun with this. Uh, the Rhino has come out looking pretty darn good. I did forget to add exhaust, uh, so I did go back and fix that, um, but I tested it out and it's working well. Um, yeah, so the steel color that I chose was actually just the normal steel color, apparently. I thought it was a darker one. The way that the automation light showed it is obviously different than what it turns out like in Beam, so that's okay. It's the same color as the Rhino used to be. It's just this time, it is significantly taller. Now, let's take this for a drive, and then we'll take it to some appropriate areas to uh, show you of its capabilities, but I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Here we go. So immediately you're going to notice... Starting, it has a very tough time. Uh, it needs more torque, uh, but other than that, once you get moving, once you get a bit higher in those revs, this thing does not stop for anything. There is no stopping the lifted Rhino. So the grid map is home to a few different off-road obstacles, and that's why I brought it here. Uh, we have a few things that would challenge any normal vehicle, but as you can see, the massive ground clearance of this allows it to just bounce over pretty much anything um, without even trying, like even the biggest of bumps, it just does not care. Uh, let's go take on some of the rocks over here. Uh, we're going to uh, hesitate just a little bit. We'll take on the small rocks. You can see it jiggles a little bit, bounces around, but like nothing happens. And then if we go ahead and try the big rocks, uh, which are just over here. Yeah, so these ones, uh, we'll take this one a little slower. <laughs> you just have no issues. You're just bouncing around. If if the torque keeps up, then that's it. Like, this will just take off. And uh, as I say that, I beached myself on the one tallest rock in the entire thing. It actually beached it on the engine as well, which is impressive. Alright, so from a starting area like this, it has issues. I'm just going to lock the front and rear diff and put it in low range. Uh, putting it in low definitely does help a lot uh, from getting getting to a, uh, a start and if we uh, just switch it back over then got no problems just driving normally once again but I think you get my point like it just did not care about most obstacles except for that one rock back there all right as a quick size comparison you can see a regular bugo right there and then this is the rhino um, slight difference but you know exactly what this calls for we can't just leave a bugo laying around like this it's perfectly good it needs to be crushed so in order to do this i'm just going to go at it from the front but i'm going to switch it to low range and i'm going to lock the diffs uh, that'll help us hopefully get over this bugo with relative ease um, i'm going to enjoy this all right here we go oh it just crushed it no problem there at all Oh, this is way too fun. Okay, let's do that again. All right, minor damage on the Bugo, but you know what? That's not enough. Let's do it again. <laughs> all right, all right, hold on. Let's just quickly look at what that did. <laughs> Flat nose Bugo, anybody? All right, so we are at the Tough Truck Challenge map. This is the same place that I tested the Workman, 
but this time we have a slight competitive edge. I feel that there's not much that can really stop this thing. Uh, I'm going to immediately just go ahead and do the three things that we must do. Lock the bo both of the diffs, put it in low range, and let's uh, go for a tour around this place. There's a lot to explore. But one thing I did want to check is, oh yes, the off-road lights absolutely do work. And uh, most of the other lights do as well. Okay, the frame rate does not appreciate the lights, but I will leave those on maybe in the future when I have a better computer. But for now, uh, let's just try and coast around a little bit. We're sticking to the low range. Uh, what obstacle should we take on first? Now, I remember that the workman had no trouble with that little course there, so there isn't even much point in driving this over there. Um, why don't we try and go ahead and immediately do the main track? Uh, see if we can do it. All right, so I'm going to attempt to do this whole pipe section here. You can see it's uh, pretty significant. I have had trouble with this in the past, but I have made it through with one or two of my uh, previous builds. Let's give the workman, the non-workman, sorry, a go. The rhino big versus the obstacle. Here we go. No trouble at all with the rocks at the beginning. We get up to the pipes and again, no trouble. Uh, we have a few more pipes to go through. These ones are just small. But then, they come the big ones. Uh, this is the place where stuff gets stuck. Uh, usually it just isn't enough ground clearance, but the Rhino does not struggle with that in the slightest. <laughs> the ultimate off-road vehicle? Um, I think so. <laughs> we just have to climb up this one last piece here. So far, so good. A bit of a bridge. Ooh. Oh no. Okay, I'm getting turned around here. Uh, but we should be able to recover. Oh, that is really not a good angle. And a bit of a cheaty way down, but yeah, I think that counts. <laughs> Made it without even really trying there. That was pretty darn easy. One last challenge here before we crush the more cars, because what else are we going to do with a monster truck? Uh, let's climb the uh, hill over here. This is probably the hardest thing on this map, but it is the main feature. Um, that other thing we did was... Uh, was definitely a big part of it but this is the main feature and again no trouble uh, we're wheel spinning quite a bit and I'm not sure we're gonna be able to make it under this low obstacle okay good thing the lights do not have um, a <laughs> clipping box uh, we have managed to make it over that so far there is a lot of v12 noises coming out of this thing um, and a lot of tire smoke as well it does like to wheel spin quite a bit and I believe that I have wedged myself in a tree, uh, which is unfortunate to say the least. Okay, we're struggling to start at a stop here, and again, that's because of the gearing and the way this thing is set up. Um, it's really not made for it. I'm going to quickly switch to realistic and try again really quickly, um, but I'm going to build the revs in neutral and then hit it in first and then leave it in first and then hopefully that'll help uh, with the torque situation. It's not going to help with the wheel spin, but uh, we should be able to lay down some serious dust. Yeah, that didn't really work. Well, it was pretty cool to try, and now we get to see how tough it is, or what the tree looks like. Yeah, no trouble at all with most obstacles with this thing. It is way too much fun to uh, just throw it around and do stuff like that. I think what we're going to have to do though is just go ahead and run over some more stuff. Alright, so over on this end we have a bit of a staircase. We've got the Dangan stance version, uh, we have the mock Maybach that I made, and then we have the uh, the normal Rhino over there as well, uh, which this one is based on. So let's see if that Rhino over there can make it over this. And I'm going to turn off the handbrake on uh, uh, this Rhino over here because my goodness its wheels are starting to catch fire all right here we go let's see if we can do this uh, we're gonna stick to low range we're gonna stick to um, automatic gearing because I think it'll be fine <laughs> the way that it is um, hopefully with a bit of a run-up we can actually make it over top of the Rhino uh, we shall see but let's give it a get a good shot here and here we go oh that's not a lot of speed Oh, we're on top of the Rhino. Can we make it over? Almost. We can almost make it over top of the Rhino with a bit of a ramp. But there you have it, folks. That is 
this video. I just want to thank those who have decided to sponsor the channel, uh, specifically Will, Canadian Steel, Boris Ramirez, and Slowfire Chicken 69 Thank you for your support. It really means a lot uh, for those of you who click the join button. I appreciate it. Yeah, the Dan Gan is not looking too good, but I'm surprised the Mock Maybach actually managed to live through that without too many issues. Not too bad. But that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Uh, yeah, Tuesdays are definitely more about some weird stuff like this. But hey, just wait till a little bit later. Friday, I've got some good stuff coming up. We might be making a competition to the owl. We'll see.